Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a Sangaku problem. Before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to my new members, Muhammad and Kemal. Thanks for supporting the channel. This problem was taken from a book by Gary Huvent. I will include some links in the description down below for your reference. Let's get started. So we have six circles with radius one are inscribed in a rectangle as shown. Find the side lengths of the rectangle. As always, we'll start by making some connections. So let's go ahead and connect these centers here. I'm going to start with that one. And then I will draw a horizontal segment here from this center to the other one. And obviously I want to extend it a little bit. Okay. And then I'd like to bring down something here so that I can basically go all the way down. Notice that that's a vertical line that doesn't hit the point of tangency. That's important. And of course, we'll be making a little bit more connections here. But I think these are the most important ones. And then let's go ahead and make this connection so that we can basically uh, get a equilateral triangle here. You probably noticed that we're going to go with this equilateral here. And then of course, I'd like to draw the height as well. So let me go ahead and make this connection too. Awesome. Great. Now, what are we going to do? First of all, this problem was taken a book on Sangaku problems, but I modified it a little bit. All right. But it's pretty much the same thing. So now the radius of each circle is one. So this is one. This is one. This is one. This is one. We're going to use that information, obviously, in a little bit. And this is also one. OK, great. So this is also one. This is also one. So now notice that we do have an equilateral triangle whose side length is two. And since the height is going to be perpendicular to the base, that means that its length from the 3069 triangle is going to be square root of 3. Awesome. We're, we'll definitely use that information. First of all, notice that here we have the two centers and we're going to find how much apart they are. OK, so I'll start by using the Pythagorean theorem in the right triangle here, the big one. Let me go ahead and shade it so you can see better. So this is the right triangle that I'm referring to. And in that right triangle, we know the height and the base. We're going to find the hypotenuse. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, the base is one, two, three, four, five units, and the height is root three. So we're basically talking about five squared plus square root of three squared square rooted, right? That's basically going to be the hypotenuse. And this is going to be 25 plus three, which is 28. It's going to be the square rooted. So it's going to be 2 root 7. So now I know that this length is 2 root 7. Let me go ahead and write that down because I'll be using that information in a little bit. OK, so this is 2 root 7. Great. What else do I need? Well, first of all, I do have I have to notice that I have another right triangle here, right? We don't know the height of that. So let's go ahead and call this H and I don't know the base either. Let's call that X. OK, now we do have another right triangle here. One thing we do know, though, these are one. So the hypotenuse is going to be two. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem in this skinny right triangle. All right. That's what I'm going to do next. Let's go ahead and write it down. X squared plus H squared is equal to two squared, which is four. Awesome. Now, I do have two variables in one equation. So I do need another equation. And that equation is going to come from the big picture. The big picture is basically I'm talking about this giant right triangle whose vertices I'm just marking right now. Make sense? OK, now notice that the base of this big right triangle is 2 root 7 plus x, right? OK, so 2 root 7 plus x. That's going to be my base. I'll square that for the Pythagorean theorem. And then the height is the same. So that's h again. So plus h squared. What about the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse I can pretty much measure, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. There you go. All the radii. Okay. On that line or line segment. So that be that's going to be six. If you square it, it's going to be 36. Now, notice that I did get a system of equations in two variables and I have two equations. Awesome. Then we can solve it. And that's pretty much what we're going to do because I do need to find X and H. Now, notice that I only asked for the side lengths, not for the area, because a lot of times I forget to calculate the area. Either it's a square or a rectangle. 
That's why this time I decided I'm, not, I'm gonna ask for the side length so that when we're done with the side lengths, we'll be done. Great, and notice that to find the side length, since the radii, uh, radius is one, right? Uh, so notice that even though this is not gonna hit the point of tangency, this length here is going to be one, all right? And this one is one as well. So we're gonna find h, add two to it, that's gonna give us the height of the rectangle, and now we're gonna find we're gonna find this length here, which is x, and then we're gonna add the two root seven and the two on either side because basically we have to add the radius two times. Make sense? This is one and this is one. Great, so that's what we're gonna do. But let's go ahead and find h and x first. How do we find it? Well, we have two quadratic equations here. Let's go ahead and simplify. How do we simplify this equation? Well, one of the things you can do is you can go ahead and subtract them. Let's go ahead and subtract this way so that we get a positive result. Uh, let me expand it. So, well, maybe I'll just subtract it first and then take care of that later. So this minus this is part of it. And then when you subtract h squared, it's going to cancel out. So we end up with 36 minus 4, which is 32. Nice. Now notice that h disappears. We'll get back to it later because after solving for x, we need to solve for h. But that's easy. Now, this is not even gonna turn out to be a quadratic. As you see here, it's going to be a linear equation. Let's go ahead and square it. A plus B quantity squared is going to be A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And then I have minus X squared, and notice that X squared is going to cancel out. Great, now, in this equation, obviously, we're going to be getting a very easy, quick result because it's linear. So let's go ahead and isolate the X term, four root seven X, is equal to 32 minus 28, which is equal to four. If you divide both sides by root seven, you're gonna get x equals one over root seven. And obviously, you don't wanna leave it like this. You do want to get, you do want to get a rational denominator. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply this by root seven over root seven. And from here, x should be root seven over seven. So this is the value of x, great. Now by using this, we're gonna be able to find the value of h. And how do we do that? By using this equation here. x squared plus h squared is equal to four. Awesome. So x squared plus h squared is equal to four. And what we're gonna do is we're going to replace x with root seven over seven. Square that and add h squared, the answer will be four. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice that this came from one over root seven. So if you just square it, it's gonna be, 1 over 7, right? So you can write it as 1 over 7, or you can just square it to 7 over 49. It's going to give you the same answer. It doesn't really matter. If you subtract 1 7 from 4, it's going to be 4 minus 1 7, which is 28 7. So you'll get 27 over 7. Great. Now, to be able to find h, obviously, from here, I do need to square root both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. And it should give me 3 root 3 over root 7. Obviously, we still have a uh, fraction or I mean, what is it called? Irrational number at the bottom. Let's go ahead and multiply by root seven over root seven. And this should give us three root 21 over seven in the simplest form. Okay, great. So now we got H and X is equal to root seven over seven, right? These are my X and H values. But in order to find the side lengths, which is the base and the height, uh, I'm going to need to add more uh, lengths to this. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's start with the base. Now remember, to find the base, we, we have to add 2 root 7 plus x, and then on either side we had the radii, so that's going to be a 2. Okay, what is x? Well, x is equal to, by the way, this is going to give us the base of the um, rectangle, so let's call that uh, the base or just b, okay? Okay, so let's see x is equal to root 7 over 7 plus 2. Okay, now in order to make a common denominator, I just need to multiply everything by pretty much 7 and divide, whatever. It's going to be 14 root 7, but then I'm going to be adding the other root 7, so it's going to be 15 root 7 plus 14 divided by 7. Great, so that's going to be the b value. For the height of the rectangle, I don't want to call that h because h is part of the you know problem, so let's call that h prime. And to find the height, so height is h prime. How do you find the height? 
Well, I'm supposed to add to h, I have to add 2. So this is equal to h plus 2. And as you know, h is equal to 3 root 21 over 7. And if you go ahead and add 2 to it, that's going to give you 3 root 21 plus 14 divided by 7. So this is going to be the height. This is going to be the base of my rectangle. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, bye-bye.